Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today, we're going to be reacting to languages of the British Isles. You know, before I started this journey, I always assumed that English was just the only language spoken in the British Isles. Um, but that's obviously not the case. Um, I've since learned that there are different languages in the different areas that people have kept alive all these years. In most cases, it seems like the, the vast minority speak uh, the traditional languages in their respective areas. But um, if I'm not mistaken, Wells, for example, I think the majority of people actually still speak Welsh. I'm not 100% sure of that, but uh, that's the impression I have now. But anyways, guys, I've been wanting to check this video out a while because I want to know what all the different languages are, how many languages are actually in the British Isles. So let's go ahead and check this out. English is the third most widespread language in the world, behind Spanish and Standard Chinese. Really? It's spoken from England to Canada to South Africa to New Zealand to Australia. You know, thanks to the old empire. Wait, that's not what I'm meant to be talking about in this video. Um, what was it? I thought Spanish. Spanish history. I mean, I thought English would have been a little bit more popular than Spanish. Languages. That's interesting. That's the one. In this video, I'm going to be having a look at which other languages are spoken in the British Isles. Because while English is its most famous export, it's by no means the only one. So let's have a look. Now, in this video, I'm going to be looking at country by country which languages there are in the British Isles. Okay, guys, what flag is this? That's a flag I haven't seen yet. Um, well, consider here's Scotland, here's England, here's Wales, here's Republic of Ireland. Is this the Northern Ireland or Northern Ireland's flag? I, I still, I'm still not sure if Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland share a flag. It doesn't really make sense that they would considering they're two separate countries. Uh, but anytime I've ever looked, this is the only flag that comes up for Ireland. Anyway, I've even typed in Northern Ireland and this flag comes up. So, um, Maybe this is the Northern Ireland flag? I don't know. Hopefully, well, I guess it'll tell me. So let's go ahead and check this out. Isles. And in this video, I've decided to put Ireland and Northern Ireland together simply for geographic reasons. So please, nobody start a war in the comments. The first country I'm gonna look at is Scotland. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hmm, what was that? <laughs> The most famous and romantic language to come from Scotland has got to be Scottish Gaelic. Some basic phrases Gaelic. include Slanjava, a toast, Kimrahashif, how are you? La Nouve Andre Madui, happy St Andrew's Day, Alba Gabra, Scotland forever, Claymore, meaning big sword, Sassanach, meaning Englishman or foreigner, literally meaning Saxon, which dates back to the Dark Ages, and Guma Fada Beo Stuart. Long live the Stuart. I mean, come on, this is history with Hilbert. I'm going to put some history in there. Where in Scotland do they speak Gaelic? Mostly in the Western Highlands and Islands. Islands such as Lewis, Harris, Darren, Bob, Mark, and Thomas. <laughs> oh, 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 wait, no, that, those aren't the names. Hold on. Oh, um, I say. Islands like <laughs> Lewis, Harris, Eust, Skye, Tyree, and Isle. These are the places where Gaelic has remained the strongest, even though many areas of Scotland, which used to be Gaelic-speaking, have now either become English-speaking or both English and Scots-speaking. But I'll okay. I just want to see what the percentages are here. So it looks like so these are. Is this the Highlands? Is this what they call the Scottish Highlands right here? Um, so it seems to be that. Huh. Okay. So basically, it seems like the the West, or, yeah, the West speak the language, the traditional Scottish. What? Do you, how do you say that? Gaelic? Gaelic? Hold on. What's it? The most famous and romantic language to come from Scotland has got to be Scottish Gaelic. Gaelic. And okay, so I always said Gaelic. Okay, good deal. Okay but I'll get on to that in a minute. Now, Gaelic is a Celtic language Gaelic. and it originally came from Ireland. Huh. Now, why did the Scottish Gaelic come from Ireland? Well, I'll explain that. 
Once upon a time, there was a powerful family living in the north of Ireland called the Uinil. Now, if you think this name looks familiar, well, that's because this is the old Irish version of the oh, modern no. name O'Neill, still mm. an important and large family. Now, the O'Neill expanded their kingdom and founded a kingdom called Dal Riada. And Dal Riada was a kingdom that originally was both across the north of Ireland and the south west of Scotland. And this is how uh, Gaelic from Ireland came into Scotland. Huh. Now, Gaelic is actually uh, not an official language of the United Kingdom, but there is a BBC radio and uh, TV channel, which is entirely in Scottish Gaelic called BBC Alba. And Alba, as you can remember from Alba Cabra, which means Scotland forever, is the Gaelic word for Scotland. I'm now going to play for you a native speaker speaking some Scottish Gaelic. Smisha Rosemary, I'm a hooker on the to chase on the Balabic of the Vilkiana Mono. The Gaelic I can have. A harok Gaelic ek mabahad, agus leshen chay mahuk alan na dachi fhar a roshni clech gur bhir le fat na chije. A chaganian shen chay meidir trun scol agus yung sich megali. It's a really beautiful language. Chum in loshni shachat imet och bliana chikisk trvian na Gaelic agus in loshni elisach na Gaelic agus elisach inatan Gaelic. Scots way will was blood. Now there is some debate as to whether Scots should be considered a language or just a dialect of English. Now I'm going to make a video about this in future, but for this one I'm just going to treat it as a language. Now we in Scots means small, <laughs> okay. it doesn't have the same meaning as in English. Lads and lasses are boys and girls. Old Lang Syne is a song which is often sung at New Year, and it essentially means a long time ago. I'm from Glasgow means I'm from Glasgow. Mm. A wee drink of iron brew means a drink of bleach. Why wouldn't I fight for Charlie? Is why wouldn't I fight for Charlie? Again, the Jacobite references. And if you're Dutch, a lot of words in Scots are a lot more like Dutch words. And why is that? Well, you'll just have to wait until the history of Scots for that one. There sure slays an awful braze and the deals at Killycrankio. This is from a very famous song which I very much enjoy. Link will be in the description. So where do they actually speak Scots? Well, they speak it on Orkney, not Orkney, Aberdeenshire, Angus and Ayrshire. These are the regions where most Scots speakers are. So if you remember Scottish Gaelic was very much, or Gaelic rather, was very much spoken in the West, on the Highlands, mm. in the Islands. Okay. Scots is the other side. Scots is mostly spoken in the East, again clustering around these regions of uh, Shetland and Orkney, Aberdeenshire, Angus and Ayrshire. Now, again, to look at the language tree, Scots is a Germanic language. Now, I sort of hinted at this earlier. Scots comes in from Old English. Now, I'll have a quick look into this in just a minute. And its closest relations are then languages such as, obviously, English is a close relation. Then you've also got a very close relation, as I said, to Dutch. You can recognize words, Frisian as well, and to a lesser extent, the other Germanic language. So, so far, the... A lot of the people in the highlands, the islands to the west, the west in general of Scotland, speak the traditional Scottish Gaelic, Gaelic, which come from Ireland originally. The people that are more to the east or the south speak what is Scots, which is kind of a, a it seems like a mix of English stems. This comes from English. So uh i could actually look at when he was saying those words i could actually see a lot of the uh i could see what he was saying i could probably piece together what what was being said if i was to read some of those words in a book you, you know that's that's pretty cool that's pretty cool just there the reason that the Scots language actually exists is because of the Kingdom of Northumbria. Now, Northumbria, unlike the modern-day county of Northumberland, was a lot larger. And actually, Northumbria stretched right the way from north of the Humber and sometimes even south of the Humber when it occupied the Kingdom of Lindsay around modern-day Lincolnshire. It also went right the way up thanks to King Oswald's conquest, or it was probably Oswy actually, who conquered parts of southern Scotland, right the way up to, I think, Abercorn was the northern border of Northumbria. 
Now, the Northumbrians spoke Old English because they were Anglo-Saxons, and they brought the Old English language into Scotland as well. Now, when Old mm. English was uh, changed and altered because of the Normans and because of French, it evolved into Middle English. Yet in Scotland, where this was much less, the language remained much truer to its original Old English roots, and the Scots Ooh. language was born. Oh. I'm now going to play the Scots audiobook version of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter, called Peter Kinnan in Scots. But run the eno a cucumber frame, who did he no meet we, but Maester MacGregor? Maester MacGregor was doon in his hunker setting off small kale, but he looked up and ran after Peter, wagging a scartle and roaring out, Stop, Brigginor! <laughs> wow! Peter was gay sir frichtet. He stood all over the garden, for he couldna mind the way back to the yet. He tint eno his shin among the kale, and the other she among the tatties. After losing them, he ran an off hours and get fester, say that a jaloos he might have won a war all the gither, gin he hadna misfortunately run into a grosset poke, and gotten clocked by the large buttons on his jacket. So Scott's lead, I believe is what it's called. Um, that is actually like, I never knew that that was a different language. I just assumed that was, that is like the traditional, that is one of the traditional accents I recognize from Scotland. And it's, and it, I didn't know that was like a different language. I thought like, it's so it's so similar to English in some ways, I guess because it was old English, that I just assumed that it was the Scottish accent speaking English. Wow. That's so cool. I never knew that. Wow. Next language I'm going to cover is sometimes called Gaelic, but this can be quite confusing as it gets confused with Scottish Gaelic, and Irish people actually prefer when the language is called Irish. Now, a few helpful Irish. words and phrases okay. in Irish are falche, which means welcome, uishkaba, which is Ush the Irish word for whiskey, and is actually where whiskey comes from, from uishkaba to whiskey. Oh. It's a bit of a long one, but that's hmm. where it comes from. Poke Mahon, which is um, Mahon. a rather less polite one. Uh, you'll have to look that one up yourself. <laughs> but the Irish are quite proud of it. <laughs> now, the main way that most people come into contact outside of Ireland with the Irish language is through their names. And I'm going to show you now how to pronounce them. So this one is Niamh. 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 Siopom. Siopom. Siop. Hon. Siob. Hon. Siob. Hon. Siob. Hon. Naum. 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 Aouif. 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 Okay, so this is how you actually pronounce them. Neve. Neve. Siobhan. Siobhan. Naomi. Naomi. And uh, I think it's Ether, this one, Ether. Ether. Now, where do what? they speak hmm. Irish in Ireland? Now, as you can see, there are regions all throughout mm. the Republic of Ireland where Irish is well spoken. What? Wow. I did not know that. I did not know so many people still spoke the traditional language. Wow, like we're here. Is Are these, these dark screen? Uh, this is like 70 plus percent. And then you got a bunch of 45 to 70 percent and even through. Wow. The Republic of Ireland, the majority speak at least 25 percent. Wow. I. Uh, wow. Much less so in Northern Ireland, where there is another majority and a different language, which I'll get into in a minute. Oh. But there are some regions which you can see are 
probably just under 70% wow. Irish speakers. And these regions are called Gaeltachts, and there are several. There's some in Donegal, County Mayo, Connemara, Dingle, and West Muscari are some of the largest ones. And Gaeltacht means Gaelic or Irish speaking region. Gaeltacht. Now, Irish is doing very well as a language, and it's one of the official languages of the Republic of Ireland. Really? Alongside I mean English. That's awesome. I, uh, you know, but it's just it's just surprised me. I didn't I didn't know that. But like that's awesome. I, I think the traditional language should be an official language and I think the traditional language should be uh, you know, kept going. Now to look at the Celtic language tree again. Obviously Irish comes from Old Irish and before that Primitive Irish. Now, how did Irish come to Ireland? Well, a long time ago, some fancy European farmers brought new bling with them, and while they were bringing that with them, they also brought a new language with them, a very old type of Irish, which we now call Guadelic. And all the languages like Irish and Gaelic, and a few of the other ones I'm going to cover, are part of the Guadelic family of Celtic languages. Now, a lot more happened in the meantime. So, for example, you get the Norsemen coming over and bringing mm. Old Norse, then you also get the English coming over and they conquer an area around Dublin. Now, this area keeps expanding, and you also get the Scots coming and moving into the north which is where my so now i'm going to place some of the news from ireland which is completely in the irish language Deva Mahasa Chan Hona. Dead on Tara Aragadish, Michael Noonan, Nach Fedelesh, Ian Liodu, a Yenever Huris Silamon Kady Ud, Er Tugoch Connerhi Dive Saradonig and Riotha Saguacht, Thurish Gitcher Guguidoch Aragado Kishta Tar Hall on the Mount, Kishtach Gishta Pinchin, Bon Kady, Shinchracha, Lar on Tara Noonan, Lenar Durish Gord, Sarachani Vonachan, Eliminachanov. Wow. Ulster Scott, this must be the from. Huh? But hold on a minute. Who's this dashing young fellow on the horse? It isn't William of Orange, King of Great Britain, Ireland, Scotland, England, and also that other place, the Netherlands. Ulster Scots is then mostly considered to be a dialect of the Scots language, which I covered before, having come in from Scotland. Now then it also makes sense that the highest percentage of speakers of Ulster Scots in Northern Ireland are those in the north, who that are then closest sense. geographically to Scotland, where they came from. Now what's the history behind this? Why are there Scots speakers in Northern Ireland, a, con a traditionally Gaelic or Gaelic speaking area? Once upon a time, when times were simple, English speakers lived in England and Irish speakers lived in Ireland. Now, as we already covered in the early Middle Ages, Scots began to develop differently from English. Now, the English in, I think, the 12th century invaded part of Ireland around Dublin, and over the next few hundred years, they kept expanding and fighting against the Irish. Now, the Irish had one strong base from which they resisted the English, and this was in Ulster. Now, there were Irish Gaelic warlords there who fought constantly against the new invaders, and also the language was a large part of this. The people there were very much still Gaelic speakers and had Gaelic customs and held out against the English, who at this time were also Protestants. Mm -hmm. So what the English did, who were at this time also unified with the Scottish after James I, was they sent many Englishmen and Scotsmen over to Ulster, to this very Gaelic region, to essentially replace the Irish population. And then you get many people from Scotland who spoke Scots coming wow. into Northern Ireland in an attempt to replace these Gaelic people to assert control over the region. And that's why Scots came into Northern Ireland. Tons of fire on it,
I think it's fair to say that Welsh has got a little bit of a reputation of being wow. a language with lots of difficult sounds and really long words that people really don't want to have to learn because they are a real nightmare to get out. But, you know, this is completely unfounded. And in this one, I'm just going to look at some really easy little Welsh phrases, you know, very small, a few words. So there's nothing to worry about. So the first one, shme, is shme. sort of like shme. hello or welcome. Then there's dwi Hilbert, which dwi means Hilbert. my name is Hilbert. Borda, Borda. which means good morning. Chlanver Pathwingeth Gogarich Windra Bochlantisilio Gogogoch is a place where you can visit in Wales. It's very nice. <laughs> Again, nothing too challenging there. So, where in Wales do they speak Welsh? Well, pretty much throughout Wales, some degree of Welsh is spoken, although in some areas, especially such as Anglesey, Gwynedd and Pembrokeshire, there are clusters of Welsh speakers. Wow. Now, Welsh is the only other language in the United Kingdom, apart from English, to have official status, but then only in Wales. And Welsh is taught in, I believe, all schools. And Good. I think roughly a third of schools are completely taught in Welsh. The language wow. of instruction there is Welsh. And as you can see, on the west coast, on the western, the western half of Wales is where Welsh is most spoken. Yeah. Again, because the eastern side with the border with England, England is where yeah. uh, English has had more of an effect that makes on the people there. So again, if we look at the Celtic language tree, we see that Wales, instead of being in the Guadalic branch, like Irish and Scottish Gaelic, is in the Brythonic branch. Now let's have a look at why there is this distinction between the two. So, first of all, once upon a time you had the Brythonic languages being spoken in Britain. Now if you remember, in Ireland, a different group of European farmers this is the theory that's believed, went to Ireland and there they spoke the Godelic languages, although the Godelic and Brythonic languages were still related. However, when the Anglo-Saxons came in, they brought in a Germanic language, so more like Frisian or Dutch or German, and they pushed the Britons, the Brythonic speakers, into the corners. And one of the theories is that then uh, Welsh and Cornish are simply versions of the Brythonic that were being spoken there, as well as mm. possibly Pictish. I'm going to play a little bit of audio from a Welsh vlog channel, which is completely in Welsh. And again, if you want to know where any of the clips came from, or want to watch them again, or find out more, find out more about the languages, then just follow the links in the description below. Hello, uh, I saw you channel. No, I can't even get this. Um, do you vlogs? Well, my I know and um, do it differently. Um, I'm going to make them right. Well, I think I should call it. Um, do you want to do some way on the sea and will your channel be more vlogy? With a Zoella, pointless blog, Max Butler, hang out kid. Um, do we and I got an inspired video. I'm going to make a lot of the sauce and come right. I had it my vlogy and Beth public I didn't. I'm going to make the last of Benson come back. Here's 40 shillings on the drum for those who volunteer to call. Wait, I assumed that England was only English. <laughs> Is there other languages? Oh, Cornish. How means hello in Cornish. Fatla Geneth means how are you. Kernau is the Cornish word for Cornwall. Now, where in Cornwall do they speak Cornish? Now, okay, Corn uh, hold on. Cor Cornwall, I mean, I've heard of that. Is that a part of England or is that like a separate... Is that kind of like the way the Republic of Ireland or Northern Ireland split and Northern Ireland is considered its own nation? Is is Cornwall part of England or is it like considered its own nation? Because I haven't really looked into anything Cornwall specifically. Um, you know, I had planned on at some point, but uh, I need to really understand what exactly is Cornwall compared to England. What was actually 
uh, very much in danger of being lost forever because uh. it did actually go extinct. But there have been efforts made in recent years to revive that's the great, language. And as such, even though there are very small numbers at the moment, there are areas where Cornish is picking up. Now, some of the main areas in Cornwall are Padstow, Bodmin Moor, Land's End and the Lizard. And these are all areas where Cornish is spoken to some degree. Now, I've made, put this map together myself using other information to clearly show where... Uh, some clusters of Cornish speakers throughout the county of Cornwall are living, but as you can see, very small numbers at the moment. Now, Cornish is another Celtic language, mm -hmm. and it's in uh, the same vein of Celtic languages as Welsh is, so it's uh, slightly more distantly related to Irish and Scottish Gaelic. And mm. Cornish as well came from the Brythonic languages, the same situation with Welsh. When the Anglo-Saxons came in, they pushed the Britons, the uh, Celtic inhabitants of Britain, to the corners. And Cornwall actually held out for a very long time. There were people in Cornwall called the Dumnonii, and the Dumnoni uh, held out against the Anglo-Saxons until they were eventually conquered, I think, by uh, King Athelstan, of Wessex but for a very long time Cornwall was an independent Celtic kingdom and they retained the language right the way up into the early 19th century and now they oh. are trying to revive the language once again. The first time that I ever heard the Cornish language was actually when I was watching TV and there was an advert for Kelly's Cornish ice cream which was partially in Cornish and Kelly's actually does a lot of work to promote the Cornish language so I'm actually going to show you that advert now to showcase what the Cornish language sounds like. Now it is partially in English and partially in Cornish so good luck telling it apart. Imurez, Nav Cavallo, a Kelly's Cornish ice cream, ag you as tasty as. We're Il Cavos, agon suerial splan, nigga misc, honeycomb crunch, praline caramel, agon wev, berry eaten mess. If you gris old, gans clotted cream, dwarf bukis lail. <laughs> Hans prif you moi, in morns nagas, a local supermarket. My hello, take home six new parlour flavours. Get on. Kelly's, Cornish for ice cream. <laughs> Manx. What? And the last language we're going to look at today is the Manx language from the Isle of Man. And oh. just like Irish and Scottish Gaelic in the Manx language, the word for their language is also something similar to Gaelic. Now we're going to have a look at some Manx words and phrases. Mormai is good morning, Fastermai is good afternoon, Guramayed is thank you, and Gaumileshkal is excuse me. Bla is flower, and Castle means castle which is similar to the Irish Cashel. Where do they speak the different dialects? Well, you have Northern Manx, which is spoken in historically these parishes, and Southern Manx, which is spoken there. And it's generally around the edges, the north and south, where Manx is strongest on the Isle of Man. Manx is, again, a Celtic language. It is a Gaelic Celtic language from Old Irish, so more closely related to Scottish Gaelic mm. and Irish than to Welsh and Cornish. Now, how did uh, the Isle of Man end up speaking a Gordelic language instead of a Brythonic language? Well, if we go back again, people in Britain spoke Brythonic and people in Ireland spoke Gordelic as a rule. But the Irish, they came across and they founded the kingdom of Dal Riada, if you remember from Scottish Gaelic. And they also settled on the Isle of Man, bringing their language, Old Irish, with them. Now, of course, then you get people like the Norsemen coming with Viking raids and Old Norse is introduced, although Old Norse had but a little effect on the Manx language, although they were an important presence in the area. They ruled the Isle of Man and uh, the Lords of the Isles for quite a while. Now I'm going to play a little bit of Manx being spoken. Brian, just inch down, begging me down. Well... Um, Ned Madrill as in Gow. She, um, Remnish uh, Gold McGee at Marish of Rega, Consumption Shilia, Elorty Dugas, Australia, and Grey, Nak Dugly Mona Gale, Gow and Kuts, Thunder Kuts Mua. Remy, Michelrish, Ned Madrill, uh, Tren, well, 
Kate Nagaya that you had as Remy Junu record this day. Ah, hold me shilly er doing a cring, Kate Nagaya, yes. Some honourable mentions for other languages of the British Isles are Pictish, Norn and Cumbric, but unfortunately they didn't stick around long enough to be included in this one. Hmm. Alright everybody, thank you very much for watching this video about the other languages spoken in the British Isles. Now if you're interested in this kind of thing and you're new, just hit the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. I've got several videos on sort of the language. And that was awesome. I had no idea there were so many different languages. You know, I had since learned that there were a few. I think I thought there were like five. But when you add in the other ones like, uh, you know, Manx, uh, you know, Cornish, uh, you know, what, you know, Pictish was the one, Norn, Cumbric. Uh, it sounds like he's saying those are gone extinct, which that's sad, which is really great that a lot of these languages are being, well, Turns out they're being spoken quite quite often on some of these areas. If you go to Ireland or if you go to Scotland, um, if you go to Wales, these languages are being spoken quite a bit. I don't know about Manx. He didn't really go into detail about how often. It's, it was a very small area that these languages, the Manx was sp spoken in. But um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome that people are still keeping these languages alive. This was interesting. It really, you know, like now I'm interested in checking out the Isle of Man and Cornwall because I'm, I'm now curious who owns these places. Who, you know, it, I guess the, the Isle of Man and uh, Cornwall are obviously part of the UK. I'm guessing, but what country are they specifically a part of? Is Cornwall a part of England, and is the Isle of Manx? I mean, the Isle of Man, is that a part of Scotland or is that a part of Ireland? Or is that a part of the, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, this was really interesting, guys. Um, I'm going to look deeper into some of this. I, I would love to learn one of these languages. I don't know which one. Uh, they, you know, they sounded beautiful, especially the singing, you know. Um, I've been told I need to uh, check out some uh wells what was it wells male choir the male choir of wells or something like that um because i noticed that when i watched the welsh national language be, i mean was it the yeah the welsh national language being uh not link sorry the welsh national anthem being sung uh i was like wow i was thrown back of how just powerful that was now all the national language is powerful but I was specifically told I need to check out the well, the Welsh National Choir, the Men's National Choir, something like that. Um, I can't remember what that was. I'll have to check that out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please click that like button. Feel free to leave your comments or suggestions. And don't forget to... Ugh, I'm tongue-tied today. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to continue to join me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.